Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Good evening, Deacon Cannon. God bless you, sir. Thank you for tuning in. We're going to get started in a few minutes. A couple of minutes, shall I say? Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We bless you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Bless your name, Father.
Amen, amen. We're going to go ahead and get started. Good evening, son. Thank you for tuning in. Shonda, bless you, bless you. Hallelujah. Happy New Year to you all again. It's uh, the first Bible class for the year, praise the Lord. We made it over to another year. We had Bible class for a whole year, praise the Lord. And I tell you, I'm excited because I love teaching this word about the Lord how he delivered his people, even myself, from the strongholds of the enemy, the power of darkness, how God has equipped us through his spirit to stand firm in the faith of Jesus Christ. Even though we go through challenges, we go through tests in our own personal lives, and sometimes we feel like giving up, we feel faint-hearted. But I come to encourage you tonight to know that God is on your side. He is the reigning king. He's sovereign. He's holy. He's mighty. He's majestic. He is everything you need. God bless you, Demetrius. God bless you. Amen. Amen. So we're going to go ahead and open up in a word of prayer. And I pray you all had a, a beautiful start of the year and that your year would be prosperous, would be exciting, be blessed and highly favored of the Lord. That everything you believe in God for, it will come to pass in your life. Now, I know many people make resolutions of things they expect to do in 2023 to make their lives better. But I tell you, I don't believe in resolutions because a lot of times we make those false resolutions and we don't even complete them ourselves. So I believe in just trusting God to take me one day at a time to be what he wants me to be, do what he wants me to do. And say what he instructed me to say and to walk in his will every day of my life. Our church started a fast this uh, past uh, Sunday. We just started fasting. And um, I thank the Lord for the Holy Spirit leading my pastor and I to do this. Because so far it's been enriching in my spirit the fasting that God has led me to do uh, with our church. And we believe in God that we're going to see changes in all of our lives to be perfected in our walk with God. Even though sometimes we stumble, sometimes we're going to fall. But know this, that as long as you have a will, a desire, and a heart, God can use you. He'll raise you back up again in the place you need to be in him. It doesn't matter what people say, what they do to you. The Lord himself will be your strength in times of weakness. And that's a guarantee we have from the Lord. So let's open up in a word of prayer. Grace to God, our Father, I thank you and praise you for this new year, the first Bible class, oh God, we're able to engage in on today. I thank you, Lord God, for the spirit of truth that comes, Father God, to, from the Holy Spirit to teach us your truth, oh God, on how to live a fruitful, abundant, and a free life in Christ Jesus. Cleanse our minds, cleanse our hearts from all unrighteousness, Forgive us for our sins, knowing and unknowingly, Father God, come into our heart and wash us clean tonight, O oh God. Remove the business of the day that we'll be able to focus on hearing your word. He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the church. Because, God, we can't hear unless the Spirit speaks to us. Now speak, God, by your word to help change our lives for the better. And we thank you for every participant, every person that joined in tonight, O oh God. They will receive a special blessing upon their lives, O oh God because of their desire to hear your word. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. You know, the last couple of weeks, I would have started Bible class last week, but the two weeks prior, I was just sick. I took the flu shot, and I got so sick. I had a fever. I, I was um, having body aches and coughing and sneezing and tired. And I'm like, God, what is going on? But I told the devil he's a liar. He can't stop me from doing what God wants me to do. But I couldn't come on live last week because of the coughing. So I said, well, this week I'm going to trust God. This coughing is going to subside. And I'm going to come on and do what God called me to do. God bless you, Susan. Thank you for joining in. And I, I just thank God for his healing power by faith. Because we have to, a lot of times when we find ourselves afflicted, we got to speak what God says about us. Don't get into agreement with the infirmities. Even though you might be physically ill, God's word still supersedes the illness in our bodies because we have to change our minds to believe what God says about us. And every time we speak what God says in his word towards us, it's a guarantee. It's a guarantee that his power 
will overpower the side, side effects and the symptoms in our bodies. He'll give us wisdom on what to do, how to make ourselves better, even in the midst of infirmities. I'm a living witness. You're looking at a miracle. You know, if God can deliver me from cancer, he can deliver me from anything. And that's why I know it's nothing too hard for God. It only becomes difficult when we turn our focus off of him and put it on ourselves and we, we allow ourselves to be distracted. And that's what God was speaking to me today. I was in, in my consecration today. And the Lord began to speak to me concerning his word that many times we get distracted because of things that's going on in our lives. We can't focus on God and hear his word when he speaks to us to give us a guidance and direction on what to do and the steps we need to walk in to be uh, fruitful and abundant in our daily living for the Lord. But I want to encourage you tonight, no matter what you may be going through in your own self, mentally, physically, emotionally, it doesn't matter what it is, God is able Listen to me now. He is able to bring you through it all victorious. Bring you through it all victorious. As long as you keep your focus and trust on him, he will do what he promised to do because he's faithful to his word. I was reading the scripture this morning on our prayer line. We still have our prayer line for the Pilgrim Church family, my dad's church in Gary, Indiana. If anyone's interested in joining that prayer, I will post a uh, link later on. But, um, and of course, the, uh, the phone number, because there's a phone number you have to call in to be able to uh, go live on, on, on a conference call every morning from 7 o'clock to 8. And we have such a Holy Ghost good time. I tell you, God be speaking on that line. And this morning, I read a scripture in Isaiah chapter 42, verse 16, verse 16. Isaiah chapter 42, verse 16. It says, I will bring the blind by the way that they knew not. And I will lead them in paths that they have not known. I will make the darkness light before them and the crooked things straight. These things will I do unto them and not forsake them. That's a covenant with our God. God promises you might be blinded when you can't seem to find your direction, don't know which way to go. In the Amplified, Amplified Version, it says, and I will bring the blind by the way that they know not. I will lead them in the path they have not known. And I will make the darkness into light before them and make even plain places into plain, un uneven places into plain. These things I have determined to do for them. And I will not leave them forsaken. Why? Because God loves us so much, my brother, my sister. He made a covenant with Isaiah to prophesy to his children of Israel and let them know that, hey, you may be blinded sometime and be in darkness in your life sometime, but I have a covenant with you to cause the light to shine in your darkness. That's shouting news. God will cause the light to shine in your darkness. He says in your crooked places. How many times have you been in a situation where it seems like things are just all broken and messed up and just crooked? Can't seem to get it right. God says, in that area, that particular area in your life is where I'm going to cause my spirit in your life to make things smooth before you, that your pathway will be smooth, that you can come before God to walk in his presence, walk in his will, walk in his authority for your life in spite of what the enemy do to try to distract you. That is so awesome. That is so awesome. So tonight, our lesson, our lesson is in the, in the book, the Bait of Satan on page 85. And if you have a Kindle version, it's page 75. Kindle version 75. And the book is right here. This is the book. The Bait of Satan. This is the book that we've been teaching out of for whole, almost a whole year. This book right here. And um, in this book, in the new version of the book, it has a CD, an audio version. So you can listen to an audio version of the, of the book as well. Isn't that amazing? how God makes technology even for those who can't read. He put a CD in there where you can listen to it. That is so awesome. And so on page 85 in the book, we're going to be talking about depending on God's character, depending on God's character. We talked about pre previously before how um, many times people are quickly offended because they allow themselves to get out of the will of God. They allow themselves to have no foundation. When Jesus had told Peter, when he asked the disciples, who do men say that I, the son of man am? 
And Peter was the only one who got the revelation from the Spirit of God to say that you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And he answered correctly. But then when Jesus began to tell him, tell the disciples that I'm going to be persecuted, I'm going to be put to death. And he said, oh, no, Lord, this can't happen to you. No, we forbid this. Lord, I'll die with you. I'm going to have to go. go I'm going to go with you to, to, the, to the death. And, and so Jesus said, before the rooster crows three times, you're going to deny me thrice. Twice. Right. So, so the thing is, before the rooster crows three times, you're going to deny me thrice, which means three times. So Peter fulfilled the prophetic word that Jesus spoke over him at that moment. But the key point to that message is, it's the foundation when he told Peter, because you answered correctly, flesh and blood did not reveal this to you, but my father is in heaven. He says, therefore, upon this rock, I will build my church. That foundation, that rock, that foundation of love. He was talking about upon my love. I'm going to build my church based on love. And when you get the revelation of the love of God for you and for me, it doesn't matter what people say doesn't matter what they do to you. It doesn't matter what, what they try to do to you because we're covered with the blood of Jesus Christ. We're planted on the rock of our salvation. In addition to this, in the midst of the purging, many times the enemy makes you pray. P-R-E-Y. He makes you pray. He's looking for an area where you're easily offended to deceive you, to manipulate you, to cause you to get out of character. Cause he knows that I can get you in that one area of your life where you struggle the most, it might be anger. It might be unforgiveness. It might be bitterness. It might be rage, it might be envy. Whatever it is in your heart that makes you fly off the handle so quick because of an offense. God says tonight, I'm breaking that spirit. I'm breaking that spirit off of you because that's of the enemy. And the enemy knows if I can distract you with offense, I can make you fall out of the will of God. And one thing about God's word, it's not going to happen. When God speaks a word in our lives, the word manifests. The word produces life in us. And we have to be willing to allow the Spirit of God to change our attitudes, to change our life. Because if we don't surrender to his lordship and authority, when the enemy brings offense, it'll cause a breach in your heart. The word offense is a word that means an illegal act. An illegal act. And that's what the enemy does. He illegally violates your heart. He illegally, illegally violates your mind because you have not consecrated, you haven't prayed, you haven't fasted, you haven't surrendered to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. So anytime that anyone wants to violate your life illegally, he comes in right where you are. He attacks you in the area that most of you struggle with. And it causes temptation to flare in your heart like a cancer. And it causes to spread like a wildfire. And it causes you to get to the place where you're manipulated by the enemy. And you have no power to fight against him. That's what he does a lot of times. Because he knows if we are easily provoked. And that's why the word tells us one of the fruit of the spirit is what? Self-control. Self-control. If you don't have self-control, you're not walking in the full measure of the Spirit of God, of, of the Holy Spirit, fruit of the Spirit. Every fruit of the Spirit, it talks about discipline. And you are not walking in the will of God if you can't allow the Holy Spirit to discipline you, to get you right when you're out of order. Stop making excuses. When you mess up, just acknowledge it. If a person checks you, and they come to you in love to tell you out of order because of something you may have said or done, repent. Don't make an excuse. Your excuse ain't going to fix it. Just repent and let the Holy Spirit put you back in right standing, right relationship with the Holy Spirit through Jesus Christ our Lord. And when you do that, then the word says, but if you're led of the Spirit, you're not under the law. So if I'm led under the Spirit of God, it doesn't matter. What people do to me, I'm going to allow the Holy Spirit to fill my heart 
with the fruit of love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such, there is no law. Against such, there is no law. Nothing that can bring a charge against it. So the enemy, he has no power against you. We allow the Holy Spirit to take control of your mind and your actions. What an awesome God we serve. So tonight, we're going to talk about depending on God's character. Because one thing, if we don't pay attention when the enemy comes in our lives to provoke us to sin against God, we're not settling and trusting God. We're not depending on God. <clears throat> we're not moved to follow the Father's care because we allowed ourselves to fall as a prey to the enemy. We will not succumb. That means have the ability or the power to defeat temptation for ourselves. You will not have the power to defeat temptation for yourself when you allow yourself to remove yourself from the Father's care. God cares about you. God loves you. God is concerned about you. He's cared about everything that happens in your life, the good, the bad, and the ugly. And he's the answer to every situation. One way the enemy attempts to draw us away from trusting God is by perverting our perception of God's character. Isn't that something? He did this in the Garden of Eden with Eve when he asked her, has God indeed said, you should not eat of every tree of the garden? Genesis chapter 3 verse 1. He twisted God's commandment in order to attack and distort his character. He twisted the truth. What God had given Eve, Adam and Eve in the garden to distort her belief and dependency upon God's character. Because you know God's character, you know his nature. When you know God's nature, you know his attributes. You know his response. You know what his behavior is going to be. So in any situation, when I'm being tested, tried, and proven, I have a sure foundation upon the rock that even when the enemy comes to twist the word of God, being sensitive to the leadership of the Holy Spirit, I'll recognize an error in this way. I'll recognize an error in this truth. Because this truth is false truth. And I'll recognize it, and I'll know how to overcome it. God said, of every tree of the garden of Eden, you may, eat, may freely eat. But the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat. For in the day you eat of it, you shall surely die. Genesis chapter 2, verse 16 and 17. Genesis chapter 2, verse 16 and 17. In essence, the serpent was saying to Eve, God is withholding everything good from you. Isn't that something? Think about this. When you know what God spoke to you, Concerning your life, <coughs> excuse me, prefer, pre, knowing the calling on your life, you know what God had equipped you to do and how to do it. And all of a sudden someone comes along, that's your, your friend, so-called friend, and they begin to try to get you to doubt God's word for yourself. If God says you're going to have a ministry and the ministry is going to flourish only if you follow the requirements. If you do the research, you fast and pray, you seek my face, look for the location where I'm leading you by the Spirit. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> where I'm le leading you by the Spirit. And you go where I want you to go. The enemy comes along and says, it ain't going to work. Through one of your, your associates or your friends. You don't know enough. You didn't go to Bible college. Who you think you are? You can't do that. That's not of you. I can't see you doing that. So you begin to listen to them. When God gave you a specific order, a word, 
just for you, and they come along and tell you it ain't going to work. That's when deception comes in. Because if you know the prophetic word and you've written down the prophecies God is speaking to you for yourself, and you've been praying over these things God instructs you to do, no one has the power to make you doubt God's character. God is a God who would back his word. He would not lie against his own word, but what he speak, the word says he's able to perform it. But God's emphasis was, you may freely eat except the tree of good and evil. God had given mankind the entire garden to enjoy and all the fruit to eat with the exception of the tree of knowledge. The serpent was twisting how the woman saw God by saying, God doesn't really care for you. That's what he was saying. He was boiling down to saying, God really doesn't care about you. He knows that if you do eat from this tree, you're going to be like God. But the problem was, they were already created in the image and likeness of God. There was no need for sin. So everything they needed was already equipped for them to do in the garden. They had the right entitlement to everything. Until... <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. Until the enemy came along and began to pervert the truth of God's word. It says, God says, if you eat this tree and touch this tree, you're going to die. That's the word he put in her mind. So she began to justify that God said, we can't eat this tree. We eat this tree and we touch it, we're going to die. God never said, don't touch it. He said, don't eat of it. So a lot of times we don't study our Bible. So any preacher or any person come along and tell you a word that sounds like God, that sounds like God's nature, sounds like God's identity, his character, you accept it because you don't know the word. But when you know the word, it doesn't matter what people say, doesn't matter what they try to do, you're not going to persuade me away from my truth in my God because I know what God spoke to me who God called me to be, and I know who I am. And because I know who I am, I have the great I am abiding and living inside of me through Jesus Christ. And anything I need, he will equip me to do what I need to do in the time of need. So even in my weaknesses, a lot of times we make excuses because we get weak and we make, make mistakes and we mess up. So instead of repenting, I'll make an excuse, the reason why, if this wasn't for that person, I would never have slipped off over here. If they hadn't said this, I would never acted this way. So because of the way people treated me, I responded to them. In previous lessons, I talked about how we have to learn as children of God to be proactive instead of reactive. Proactive means I'm spending time in the presence of the Most High God. I'm spending time learning how to respond to people according to the way God wants me to do in this word and not by my emotions or my feelings. And that's an issue many people in the body of Christ have is following the leadership of emotions, the leadership of feelings instead of the leadership of the Holy Spirit. So when my feelings and my emotions become aroused, I'm going to give you a piece of my mind. And God says, humble thyself in the sight of the Lord. He will lift you up. When you stand before your accusers, don't think about what you're going to say or what you're going to do for the Holy Spirit himself will speak for you. That's when you get to the place you recognize the power of the Holy Spirit is activated within you to defend you from your adversary. We, ain't gotta, we don't have to argue with people. We don't have to defend ourselves when folk come against us. Only thing you defend is the word of God. You speak the word of God and let the word of God convict them. And the word has more power and ability to change a person's life. So after he did this, what good thing is he keeping back from you? He must, he must not love you as you thought. He must not be good, good God. 
She was deceived and believed a lie about God's character. The desire to sin was then aroused because the word was no longer life but law. It became law. The word was life. But now because of the lie she received, now she fell a victim of a sin called law. And because of that, the strength of the law is sin. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 6, 56. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 56. The strength of the law is sin. The enemy operates this way today. He perverts the character of the Father God in his children's eyes. We have, uh, we, <clears throat> we all had authorities over such as dads, teachers, bosses, governors, etc., who have been selfish and unloving. We all had somebody in our lives at one point or another who was selfish, who mistreated you, who abused you, who was unloving towards you, who didn't care about you the way they should have. And one thing about it, this is what we talked about on our radio show recently, is that we have to be careful of the words we speak over our children or one another. Because death and life is in the power of the tongue. If I speak according to the flesh, I'm going to say something that's damaging to the future of the individual. Here I just said, you speak something that's damaging to the future of an individual. Even your children, you can scar them for life by something degrading you speak over them as a child. So when they grow up, they're looking for acceptance and they find love in the wrong place. That's why many children, they turn to drugs and alcohol and gangs because of the lack of love in the home. God bless you, Sister Sonia. They find themselves gravitating to many other entities instead of God because of the lack of love. They're dealing with hurt. They're dealing with the pain. They're dealing with the scars. All the things that have been buried in their hearts for generations have hurt them for so long, they never find themselves being accepted. So they do these crazy things, children at six years old. Who ever heard of a child six years old killing, trying to kill a teacher? Had the news just yesterday, six year old child shot his teacher because he mad at her. Got his mother's gun and shot his teacher. How many times have we heard in the news some violent crime that took place from a child? And you think about it, it's because the child is not being raised the way they're supposed to be raised. And some have been raised the right way, but because of the enemy influenced their mindset through their peers and peer pressure, they find themselves drawing to the things of the world and not seeking God. My God, my God. So we have to be careful of the words we speak over our children, over one another. Because they are authority figures, it is easy to project their nature onto the God's character since he is the ultimate authority. So in other words, what we do, if we're mistreated, then we feel God needs to mistreat us too. That's what it's talking about. So because God is the ultimate authority, so those who are in authority over us, who mistreated us, we, we expect the same response from God. And God is saying tonight, that's not my character. My character I demonstrate is love and compassion, forgiveness and mercy and grace. So anything you need, I have the power to demonstrate in your life to set you free through my son, Jesus Christ, dying on the cross. The sacrifice, the ultimate sacrifice that was paid for mankind's sin and iniquity paid the price that we can have the right to the tree of life. So now we're partakers of the tree that Adam and Eve were not permitted to eat of because of the sin nature, but because we're born again, now we're partakers of the divine nature of the tree of life, which is Jesus Christ himself. That is so good. Hallelujah. The enemy has masterfully, masterfully distorted the character of our father by perverting our view of our earthly fathers. So we view our earthly fathers because there was no good, they, they were never home. They were drunkards. They were, they were uh, fornicators, adulterers. They were liars. They were thieves. So we, we distort God's character, thinking God is going to be the same way in our lives. God says, before Jesus returns, 
the heart of the fathers will be returned to the children. That is so good because God is going to restore the relationship with fathers and children before Christ returns. There's a covenant that God had Malachi, right in Malachi chapter 4, verse 6, to let us know of the love of the father going to return the human fathers back to the children. His character or nature will be seen in his leadership and it, will be, and it will be a catalyst for healing. So because the father says, I'm going to demonstrate being the father in your life, I'm going to restore the father back with the children as a catalyst for healing in the family. Why? Because I can get the head right, then the family can be healed. Broken marriages can be healed. Broken relationships can be restored. When I get the head right, then the body has no choice but to get act right. And that's what God is saying. When you get the Father's love in your heart, that love begin to begin to pour out of you as the oil of joy begin to run upon every person connected to you and they begin to experience the love of God. When you know God will never do anything to harm or destroy you and whatever he does or does not do in your life is in the best interest for you. Then you would give yourself freely to him. You would gladly be the one who laid down your life for the master. When you get this revelation of the love of the father that's for you and for me, it begin to show you how I need to learn how to love my father in the right way to where I'm willing to give my life for him. Because Jesus says, if any man desires to come after me, let him first deny himself, take up his cross daily and follow after me. And when you lay your life down for Jesus, God will withhold some things from you because he knows you're not ready to receive it. But then there are some things God will bless you with because he knows you're in the right heart and the right mindset to receive. There are many blessings are being withheld from God's people because they're not in a position to receive it yet. When you change your mind, change your heart, allow the Holy Spirit to clean you up, to perfect you, get you in right standing, right relationship with God our Father, and get back realigned with the Holy Spirit, it will begin to open the windows of heaven and cause the blessings that's being held up to begin to shower in your life. That's what God promised in his word. He will cause showers of blessings to rain on you because of his love for you. Glory to God in the highest. My God, my God. Sometimes we feel like giving up. We feel like we're about to be shipwrecked. We feel like things are going to never work out in our lives. And God says, that's not of me. That's not my character. It's not my nature for you. I love you so much to where I'm willing to bless you when you only trust me. All you're looking for is a people who say, Lord, I will trust you even no matter how bad things get in my life, no matter how chaotic things happen to me, God, I will trust you in the midst of everything I'm going through because you're still faithful and you're still a God of covenant, God of promise. My God, my God, what an awesome God we serve. What an awesome God we serve. God says in Isaiah chapter 62, in verse 3, Isaiah chapter 62, in verse 3, said, Thou shalt also be a crown of glory in the hand of the Lord, and a royal diadem in the hand of our God. You know what God is saying? When we surrender to his lordship, his authority, he going to crown you with glory. A crown of glory. He said, a crown of righteousness is what he's going to put on you when you're clothed in Jesus Christ. Why? Because that crown is Jesus. His glory is Jesus. When you have Jesus inside of you, you got the glory of God dwelling in you. That's why in the Old Testament, when God promised to send the Holy Spirit, they would come and fill the tabernacles. God himself would show up in a cloud of smoke would fill the whole temple to where the priests couldn't even minister because his presence was so heavy upon them. And that's the kind of experience we should want in our lives when the Shekinah glory begins to manifest because of God's character, 
when I line myself up with God's character and I walk in obedience to his truth, guess what? God shows up when I need him the most. I might be lying in my bed, tossing and turning, can't go to sleep, and I'm hurting, and I'm in pain, I'm suffering, I'm miserable. And I lay there, and I call in the name of Jesus. God shows up right where you are in your room. It's like a blanket. He'll cover you and cause all of a sudden, immediately the pain just subsides and you fall asleep. Why? Because how much he loves us. He wants the best for you and for me. If you have, have given yourself totally to Jesus and are committed to his care, you cannot be offended because you are not your own. When you give yourself to God's care for you, you're not going to be easily offended because you belong to him and he belongs to you. When we have the attitude, we're easily disappointed, self-centeredness because of us being short-sighted, we are unable to view our immediate circumstances through the Father's eyes. When our lives are truly lost in Jesus, we know his character, we share in his joy. We cannot be shaken or shipwrecked. That is so good. When I'm engulfed, totally surrounded by Jesus Christ, resting in his presence, I cannot be shipwrecked. Only way I can be shipwrecked in my life when my attitude don't have an attitude of Christ and I'm easily disappointed, I'm selfish, I'm prideful, I'm quick-tempered, I'm easy to fly off the handle, circumstances cause me to get, get out of character. Every time something happens to me, I don't know how to deal with it. We cannot be shaken or shipwrecked when we share in the love and the joy of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It is easy to become offended we, when we're judged by our nature, surrounding, and circumstances. This is not seen through the eyes of the Spirit. Often God does not answer me in the manner or amount of time I feel is absolutely necessary. But as I look back at every case, I understand and can see his wisdom. That's a good point. So, our author is saying it's easy to become offended by things that happen in our lives. But then he goes on to say, oftentimes when we're praying and asking God for answers to deal with certain things in our lives, and God doesn't answer right away, we feel God ain't answered our prayers. God ain't going to never answer my prayer. God don't care about me, which is not the case. Sometimes the silence of God is the best answer you can receive because it causes you to walk by faith and not by sight, to wait on God and expect God's answer to your situation to manifest. And many times God doesn't manifest his answers the way we want him to answer us because of his nature. God knows what we can handle and what we can't handle. So sometimes God will send a person in your life that has to answer what you've been praying for. Sometimes God will send a person in your life that, that knows the connection to the resources you need to get a business off the ground. But he's waiting on you <coughs> to be of good courage and to wait on him and keep doing the work of the kingdom. Whatever it is God called you to do, you keep doing it. You don't quit because things don't seem to be working out. You don't quit because things get heated. You don't quit because the storms of life come. But I'm going to keep waiting on God. But I'm going to keep doing what God called me to do. And trusting his ability to answer me according to his will. And every time you have that humbleness of heart, that surrendered heart, God will answer you according to his will. And you will know it's God because it gives you peace in your spirit. And your mind will be at ease. The worrying will subside. The restlessness will cease. Because I heard from God. And I got the answer I needed. There was, there was a time when I went through divorce in 2012. And I was waiting on God. I was angry. And God had to teach me discipline in the midst of my anger. 
And they had to get me to the place where I was trying to run from God, trying to shut out God's voice. But you got to understand, I've been in this thing for over 30 years. So there's no way I could shut God out. But the more I try, the worse things got in my life. Everything started falling apart. Until God allowed me to hit a brick wall where I had no choice but to fall on my face in repentance and tell God I'm sorry for my behavior and my response to you. And God released his grace and his favor upon my life to restore me back in right standing and right relationship as if I never left him. That's how much God loves us. He knows how to take your darkness and cause light to shine as if you never left his light. He knows how to take your mess ups, clean you up, perfect you as if you never even messed up. That's how much he loves us. All because of his character. For his own name's sake, he did this thing for you. He told the children of Israel in Ezekiel chapter 36, he told them, he said, you know what? I'm going to take out the stony heart. I'm going to give you a heart of flesh after my spirit. He says, he said, I'm going to take out the stony heart and give you a heart of flesh after my spirit. And that's in verse 27. He says, I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes. You should keep my judgments. But prior to that, he says, my God, my God, this is good. In verse 26, he says, a new heart also will I give you and a new spirit will I put within you. And I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh, and I will give you a heart of flesh. Then he says, and I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes, and you shall keep my judgments and do them. Check this out. Here's a revelation God gave me on this scripture. Isaiah was a prophet. During the Old Testament time, the Holy Spirit never dwelt in man. He dwelt among men. So Isaiah was prophesying a futuristic prophecy of the Messiah. That when the Messiah comes, he was saying that God says, I'm going to take out that stony heart, that rebellious, callous heart. I'm going to give you heart of my flesh after my spirit, because I'm going to put my spirit in you that you will obey and keep my covenant. The only way this was to take place was after the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And when Christ rose again, but before he left the disciples after the resurrection, he said, go tarry in Jerusalem to after the Holy Ghost come upon you, and you shall be endued with power from on high. Because he knew that during that encounter, awaiting and expecting a move from God, that the power, hallelujah, was going to come inside of them. As the Spirit come upon them, it was going to fill them. And they will operate in the kingdom authority. And that's the same way it is today. We have the Spirit of God living inside of us to teach us how to walk in obedience. It's easy to become offended when stuff happens in our lives. But we got to learn how to pray against the spirit of offense. Pray that's God to give you a soft heart, a pliable heart, a loving, caring heart, that you would not easily fall under pressure. Because your anointing is under pressure. Your anointing comes through pressure. Because if you can't go through the pressure, you can't operate in the anointing. So the only way, we talked about this before, the anointing can operate in your life is when God has to allow the enemy to attack you. The enemy has to attack you to force you in pressure, to force you to rely on God's ability to bring you through the pressure to release the oil of joy, the anointing. If you never go through the pressure, you will never experience the anointing. To do great exploits, supernatural things for the kingdom of God. Occasionally, our children do not understand our methods or logic behind their training. We try to give an explanation 
to the older children so they would benefit from the wisdom. And that's a key point. Young children don't understand the discipline until they get older. They don't, don't understand how to learn wisdom from the discipline until they get older. God gives us wisdom every day, but sometimes we're not mature enough to receive it. So he gives you little bitty pieces of wisdom. The things he knows that can captivate your attention, he gives you a glimpse of wisdom so he can guide you so you go, go begin to grow into maturity to receive the full measure of wisdom on how to live and move in his being. For the words in God we live, in Christ we live, move and have our being. So if you want me to learn how to live in Christ, you receive the wisdom of God. One other point, but at times they may not understand or agree with their immaturity. Later on in life, they will. Later on in life, they will. A young child cannot, cannot understand immaturity, cannot understand the, the discipline, cannot understand the, the changes they're going through, the peer pressure they're faced with. Until later on in life, they learn a lesson from the things they've gone through. I learned so much from the discipline of my parents to where it taught me a lot, even how to raise my children. And I thank God because I was able to raise my children in a different way based on the word of God than what I have learned when I was growing up. And we have to learn how to listen to the voice of the spirit. Then it says, or perhaps the reason is to test their obedience, their love, and their maturity. So sometimes God will allow you to be tested in your obedience your love and maturity to make you grow in him. It is the same with our Father in heaven. In these situations, faith says, I trust you even though I don't understand. That's what God wants you to do is trust him. Even though you don't understand, you keep on trusting in God. And God will bring you out victorious. In Hebrews chapter 11, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 35 and 39. We find the record of those who never saw the fulfillment of their promises from God and never, never wavered and, and still wavered. You still never wavered. So even though they didn't get all the full promises, they never wavered. They never staggered their faith and believed in God. Others were tortured, not accepting deliverance, that they might obtain a better resurrection. Still others had trials of mocking and scorching, yes, and of chains and imprisonment. They were stoned. They were, they were sawn into two that we couldn't have. Tempted, were slain with a sword. They wandered about, their, wandered about in sheepskin and goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, and tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and mountains and in dens and in caves of the earth. All these, having obtained a good testimony through faith, did not receive the promise. They had decided that God was all they wanted, no matter what the cost was. They believed him even when they did not, didn't, even though they died without seeing the promises fulfilled. And this was talking about the Old Testament. How our forefathers, many of them did not get a chance to see the fulfillment of the Messiah coming to pass in their life. But yet, they still believed God didn't doubt God. They could not be easily offended. We are rooted and grounded when we bear this intense love and trust in God. No storm, no matter how intense, can ever, can ever move us. This does not come by strong will or personality. It is a grace, is a gift of the grace of God to all people in the, with their confidence in God. So that I have confidence, I have faith, I have trust, I rely upon God. I throw away my self-confidence because I'm relying on God's strength, his, his presence, his leadership, his authority to lead God and direct me in the way of truth and the way of righteousness. But to give yourself in total abandonment to our Lord Jesus Christ, you must know the one who holds your life. You must know the one who holds your life in order to surrender 
to total abandonment of your self-righteousness, your belief system. You must trust in the grace of God who has gave us the strength and the power to hold on to God's unchanging hand. Hallelujah. We're going to stop right here tonight. I don't know why this cough is still lingering in my body, but I rebuke this spirit of sickness and infirmity in Jesus' name and command to loose his hold off my lungs and respiratory that I will walk in healing and deliverance in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Again, I thank you all. So I'll pass the arms on tonight. So I'll pass Denise, Minister Deborah, uh, uh, Sister Sonia, God bless you. Courtney, God bless you. Hey. Tawanda, God bless you. God bless you all tonight. My cousin Kenny, Eric, Minister Eric, Sister Jessica, God bless you all. Sister Susan, Demetrius, God bless you all for tuning in tonight. I pray that something has been said <clears throat> that would encourage you to get in your word tonight, to revisit those scriptures that were mentioned here tonight in the lesson. Now the Holy Spirit to minister to your heart. And I tell you, when you walk by faith and not by sight, my sister came, even came on tonight too. God bless you, Sister Mary. It, it's, it's amazing. And, and Mitchell, God bless you. Armstrong, God bless you. Jabbar, God bless you. Amen. I see many of you on tonight. It, it's amazing when we learn how much God loves us and how much he fights for us. I don't have to fight the enemy. I can walk in the victory. I can live in the victory. I can stand in the victory. I can believe in the victory. Because the battle has already been won through Jesus Christ our Lord. And he promises that thanks be to God, he will always cause us to triumph in Christ Jesus. That's a promise you and I have in our Lord and Savior. And I, I just pray tonight that you take a moment, God bless you all, take a moment to get in your word, find a particular scripture, meditate on that scripture, Allow that word to apply to your heart. Get into your mindset. Change your attitude. Change your character. And I guarantee you begin to open up the windows of heaven. Find yourself walking in more promises and favor God has for your life. Releasing blessings that have not been fulfilled yet in your life. The things you've been praying for, believing God for, it will begin to manifest. I'm a living witness. Things I've been praying for, for over 20 years ago just started manifesting in the last five years in my life. And I thank God that I was able to be patient and wait on God and stay faithful to God's promises in his word and allow the word to manifest in my life. And I'm a benefit, benefactor of the benefits that he daily loads me with. And that's one thing God does. He daily loads us with benefits. So in other words, all you need he supplies according to the rich and glory by Christ Jesus. When we seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. So I encourage you tonight. Allow the Lord to draw your attention to the place of self-denial. Deny your flesh and walk in the spirit. When you walk in the spirit, you will not fulfill the desires, the passions of the flesh. Because the Holy Spirit will lead, guide you, and direct you in the way God has ordained for you to walk in for his glory. So, Father, tonight I pray, I thank you for this word, God. Pray for every individual that's tuned in tonight, even those who may hear this lesson later on in this week, oh God, that will minister to their hearts. Bring life unto them, oh God. In the areas of their life, they, where they find themselves feeling bankrupt. They feel abandoned. They feel broken. They feel torn. They feel sick. Some are spiritually sick, some physically sick, some emotionally sick, that you would touch right now by your spirit, God, to bring healing in all the areas of their lives. Change our minds, oh God. Blow our minds, God. Blow our minds and give us your mind. That we begin to think godly thoughts and align our minds up to begin to agree with the word of God, to speak what the word says over our children, over our family members, over our communities, over our nation, over our businesses, of our churches, of our pastors, of our church members, God, that we speak the word of God over our people, God, till their lives begin to transform to become more and more like you in the mighty name of Jesus. And I thank you, God, 
for the spirit of truth that's been spoken in our hearts today, oh God, that we apply it to our lives and we become the better for it. And I want you to repeat this prayer after me tonight. Repeat this prayer after me. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask you, Lord God, to forgive me for my sins, knowing and unknowingly. Come into my heart. Cleanse me. Make me whole. Be my Lord and Savior. And I thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be one on tonight who may be a backslider, might, have been, might not even know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. I want to know, let you know tonight, just praying that simple prayer makes you born again. Something that simple. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever should believe in him should not perish, but should have everlasting life. Then he said that with the mouth, confession made of the heart, man believes in the righteousness. You can be saved. That if thou confess that mouth, the Lord Jesus, believe in your heart, that God raised Jesus from the dead, thou shalt be saved. And that's that prayer we just prayed tonight for restoration and salvation in all of our lives. And I pray that you continue to walk in truth and righteousness, no matter what you go through the rest of this week. Purpose in your heart. Make it a choice, a decision to not easily become offended. Make it a choice. You can do this. You have the power to do this. Because the Word of God equips you to deal with offenses. Proverbs 15, chapter, verse 1. Proverbs 15, chapter, verse 1. Says a soft answer. Check this out. Turneth away wrath. Grievous, hostile, angry words stir up anger. Those hardened words will cause anger. But God says if you come with a soft answer, and what he's talking about, you come with the answers of the word of God, an offensive moment when it rises against you. Don't allow yourself to be easily provoked and moved out of character. But speak the word of God in love, not angry, not mad, but in love. There are many times I had to check people that came against me in love. I didn't get mad. I might have been angry on the inside, but I didn't show the anger. I didn't respond according to anger. I responded with the word of God. And the Lord fought my battle and caused that person to repent. And that's what God would do for you, my brother, my sister. You stay encouraged, stay excited about Jesus. Anybody got any questions tonight? If this, if this has been a really good lesson, you want some for hearts. Sense of hearts has really been a great lesson tonight. Amen. You got any questions tonight? Any comments? Anyone want to share on here tonight? If I tell you, God is speaking by his spirit. He's doing a great thing. God bless you, Mr. Donald. God bless you. God is doing a great thing tonight in all of our lives. And I tell you, the more we apply this word to our heart, the better I feel in my spirit to my body begins to feel better. I'm going to say this one point. When I was sick for those two weeks, I said, Lord, I don't receive this in the name of Jesus. So I rebuke this infirmity. I rebuke this sickness. I kept doing what I've been doing, taking emergency, taking herbal teas, taking vitamins, taking supplements. Kept doing that, taking olive oil, the anointing, drinking olive oil. Not only that, drinking coconut oil, drinking black seed oil. Kept drinking all these different things, doing all these different things to make myself feel better. And I kept confessing the word of God that you said you heal the brokenhearted and you bind their wounds. So, Lord God, you said I called the Lord, he heard me, delivered from all my fears. I ask God right now, you heal my body, and deliver me from this infirmity. Still got a slight cough, but I'm still healed. Because he said he sent his word to heal me and deliver me from all destruction. So I believe the word of God. And the word of God began to manifest. And it's still manifesting. Every day I'm feeling better and better in my body. This cough may be lingering, but it ain't going to be lingering too much longer. Because it have to go to in the name of Jesus. And that's one thing about it. When you allow God to stretch your faith, your faith, it counterattacks the mindset when stuff happens to you. I hope you caught that revelation. 
Your faith counterattacks the situation that rises against you because of Jesus Christ, who dwells, abides, and settles in your heart and gives you the victory. That's how we overcome. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord turn his face towards you. May he lift his countenance upon you and give you peace. The Lord said the same. We'll resume again next week at the 6 o'clock hour to continue our lesson. Next week, we're going to talk about grace is given. Grace is given to the humble. Grace is given to the humble. It's from the same chapter we're in, chapter 9 of the, of the Bait of Satan. If you don't have that book, contact me and I'll tell, talk to you, uh, I'll let you know how you can get this book. If I need to order a book for you, have you send me the money, I'll give this book for you and have it sent to you. So, the bait of Satan, get this book. Bait of Satan, living free from deadly offense, get this book. And it has a DVD in it by John Bevere. Great book to have, apply to your library. And I guarantee it's going to be enriching to your soul and enriching to your spirit because the life-producing knowledge that's in this book is going to cause life to flow through you. God bless you all. Have a great night. The Lord says the same. Next week we'll come again. Shalom. May God continue to rest upon and abide in your hearts. Good night.